Hello, my name's Mark and I'm from G-Code Tutor. And I'm here today with Practical Machinist to look over some techniques we can use on a manual lathe to increase our accuracy. So when we're hitting those really tight tolerances, this is some techniques, how we can achieve them on any lathe, even old and rusty things that cannot hold limits. So when we are indexing our manual lathe along the z-axis, we usually would use the carriage or the saddle uh, handle to move great distances. Now we tend to use this handle for roughing, but it's not very accurate. There's no way um, we can use this to turn lengths accurately. So what we can do is we can make up a pile of slips. So this technique is by using the end stop on our slide. And once the end stop is located and locked off, we can then build a pile of slips to move the distance that we need and pop them between the saddle and the end stop. And then we just use the compound slide to zero off on that face and then lock off the compound slide, remove the slips. And when we move the saddle, we're now going to be moving the exact distance of that pile of slips. So this was a technique taught to me back when I was my first year apprenticeship as a manual turner. And we use this a lot to achieve those accurate lengths. So that's one tip for creating those lengths to a very high tolerance. So I've just spoke about the compound slide. That's this slide that lives on top of our cross slide on our lathe. So the compound slide is much more accurate. We have much more accurate dial on that slide there. So whether it's metric or imperial, uh, often we have both, we can pull the slide out to really to reveal either a metric or imperial um, dials there. So we can use this dial much more accurately. So if we zero our lengths off by pushing that saddle hard against the end stop, we can then use this to measure how much our lengths are going to be. So we would use this dial here on our compound slide to achieve that. Now, quite often our dials may get worn out, our threads, our lead screws, etc., may get worn out and they might not be as accurate as they once were. Now, often in industry, if we're using a manual machine, it might be decades old. So how do we get around that without having to strip the machine down and renew all the slides and all the lead screws? Well, for that, we can use a DTI, our indicator, and we can put an indicator on any part of our machine to be able to measure much more accurately than these dials can. So we can do this on both axes. So if we're using our cross slide, for example, we can pop our DTI on the back of our tool post, and then we can monitor exactly how much this tool post is moving when we're moving in X. So if we're measuring diameters, we can pop it on the back of our tool post or even on the front, depending where we have the room. And as I had issues when I was making these uh, videos right here, Quite often there is not quite the room to put a large DTI on our part. So sometimes we might have to use a smaller DTI, maybe a smaller stand in MagBase, or maybe find a different way to locate it to the machine where we have room. I was using a very small lathe when I was filming this, so I had a lot of issues trying to get my, uh, my mag base and stand and DTO all fitting. So also the other issue I had when I was doing this is trying to get that plunger perfectly parallel. Now it doesn't have to be amazing. We're not looking at getting this, setting this up with sign bar and slips to make it spot on. But if there's any taper, if there's any angle where that plunger touches our mating part, we can have discrepancies in our measurement there. So we want to get this as good as we can by eye, but we don't need to go overboard and clock this in in place itself. Clocking in a clock is probably a bit of an overkill. So to get lengths nice and accurate with a DTI, I would move the saddle up to our end stop and lock everything off so it's all tight and rigid, it's not going anywhere. Then I'll pop our DTI on the side of our tool post like I have here. So now when we index that compound slide, we can see exactly how much it's moving. So what we can do is we can face off the part and then zero our dial, pop the DTI on there, and then we can index in our compound slide to the distance we need to cut that length to. And we can measure that by using the clock face on this DTI. So once that's 
the correct length, we can then lock that off and then use the saddle to move and take our cut. Now quite often with manual machining, we have spring cuts and where we might be able to squeeze an extra thousandth of an inch or so off a face when we're machining. So we have to make sure we use a certain fill for manual machines. So by using DTIs on our slides, we can get very accurate measurements and we can repeat that over and over. And also when we're machining lengths, using the slip bar on the end stop there between the end stop and the saddle is also a great way to get in those lengths correct too. So another useful tip for using a DTI when we are using a manual lathe for accuracy is when we are screw cutting, we can pop that DTI on the back of our compound slide to measure the depth of that thread that we are cutting. And this tells us when we're at to full depth. And of course on screw cutting on a manual lathe, we often have to remove the tool from the material while we're reversing the spindle to move that tool back to the beginning of the screw thread. So we can use a DTI to make sure we go back into the exact position each time when we are screw cutting. So if you found that interesting and you would like to know more, I have a manual lathe course, which I've called the Manual Lathe Mini Apprenticeship over on my website at gcotutor.com. So this course will teach you all the skills to use a manual lathe, whether you're training for industry or whether you're a hobbyist that wants to use your piece of equipment. This course will teach you all the skills, plus there's lots of parts that um, are progressively harder and harder to make as the course goes on to really practice those skills and get that muscle memory working on your manual lathe. So if you want to know more about this course, there's a link in the description for my mini manual lathe course.